know, understand the sales cycles very well. There is identification, there is verification, there is pre-sales involved, there is sales offer, order closure, sales operation support. There's one very important part in this whole sale is the sales soft skills. And I think this is the area I'm going to focus. This Juno school is anyway focusing a lot on the ones which are in black. But my focus is going to be today on the sales soft skills and how you can add things to your personality, how you can be more effective, how you can be noticed in this herd of thousands of salespeople and how what kind of difference can this be made. According to me, you've got to be best in at least one of these. Either you understand the products of your company and the competitors very well, or you understand the process of your company very well, or you are extremely good at managing people, managing relationship and networking. If you do all three and become the best in one, I think you have reached where you should have reached. The key to success is all three, of course, but you've got to be best in one of these. And as we go forward, I will explain. So when I'm talking about the product, all you need to know is what are your company's products and its USPs? How are you better than your competition? Key areas where you can strike your competition. Where is your product positioned? What are the market price? What are the price status? What is the positioning? How is the company going to sell? What is the life of your product? Everything about the product. Now, what happens is when you learn so much about the product, you tend to specialize in the area of product management and the understanding of the product. And you become a key person, especially in the areas of software development. If you know your, if you know your language as well, you will see people coming up to you and saying, oh, he's the great guy in understanding. Let's go and check up from him. So I think one has to be very clear and appreciative about the products. The understanding is very important. When you think about Apple, you think about a product quality, that it's one of the best products, the best UI US, the best application, the fastest speed, longest battery or whatever. What do you think of, what comes to your mind when you think of Tata? Tata products, Tata group, what comes to your mind? the trust part. When you buy a Tata product, you know that, that behind all these products, there has been a genuine ethical efforts to make these products and you can blindly trust those products. I mean, examples are, you look at the product like a Tata Nano, which came with the market with such a jing bang and saying that is the cheapest car, less than $2,000. And there was a lot of hoo-ha, but the car didn't click. And the car didn't click because Tata had positioned it to in competing with the auto rickshaws. And auto rickshaws comes around 32 lakhs and the Tata Nano is around 2 lakhs. Sorry, auto rickshaws 32,000 at that point of time. And Tata Nano was around 2 lakhs. So the auto drivers could not shift. But since the positioning was a lower end market, not everybody wanted to buy. So what they did, they withdrew the car. And I'm told that very soon, and if you get onto the internet, you will see they are relaunching the car with a different design and a different positioning. So, so you had trust that once you invest in Tata, they will ensure that they will not run away with the product and they'll continue to. So I think these are some of the USPs which we need to create to, to your customers and understand from your company's point of view, what are the areas your company is focusing your products on. My question to you, are we all products? I think so. So what are our USPs and what are the strengths we can build on? Yeah, let's also see a strength as something which others also appreciate about. Now you may be, I mean, Yogita, you may be very hard working, but if others don't know about it, then they don't know what your USP is communication, trustworthy, constant dedication. How does anybody know what is constant dedication? So what people see about you is what your strengths are. You may have a lot of strengths. I'm not denying that at all. But what we see about a customer will see something in you. Your friend will see something in you. 
Your parents will say something in you, your siblings with dedication and work ethic. So everybody looks at you at a different angle. Imagine standing in the center of a circle and being looked by various people. So you have customers, parents, brother, sister, friends, vendors, your own bosses and organization, and everybody is looking at you differently. Now turn to one person's side and look at him and see what does my boss look at me as? Does he really know what my USP is? What my friends think of me? Do they really think what I think I am? And, and that's how you go to gauge your strength. And I'll talk a little bit more about it on identification of our own strengths. I have seen many times, and I go to many engineering colleges for conducting interviews. And I will tell you a nine pointer sitting in front of me cannot answer questions. A basic soft skill question. He is the best, he is the best person in terms of his marks, but when he can't answer basic soft skill questions, will I recruit him in my company? When he doesn't know how to sit, when he doesn't know how to communicate, brilliant in his product. I think those are things which make a lot of difference. So always focus on your strengths and we'll build on this further. Now, the processes in a company, they teach you how to think in a flow covering all aspects of the specific job and action. Actually, anything where you don't have to think and you're doing it without realization becomes a process over a period of time. Try brushing your, if you are a right-hander, try brushing with your teeth with the left hand tomorrow morning and you will find how difficult it becomes. But because the process is get up, take the tube on your left hand, brush on your right hand, and use it, it just does not occur to you that you are brushing your teeth because your mind is somewhere else. Uh, so the process helps you to understand the entire flow properly. Now you need to understand your company's internal processes. A lot of people don't want to get into the processes because they feel that the processes hinder their growth, hinder their movement. So the key is to understand the processes. Now I keep telling the new inductees in Oracle, Oracle is like a Ferrari. If you read the manual properly, you'll be able to not only drive it, but win, win the race. But if you try to drive a Ferrari without understanding the controls, you are dead. You are left, right, you will not be able to go straight. So sometimes the processes are very important, especially let's assume that you are making a sales to a customer. And as sales guys, it's also sometimes your responsibility to collect the money. Now, let's look at an example Let's look, at, let's look at Airtel for a moment. You pick up an order from Airtel central office in Delhi for the supply of the equipment in 23 circles all over the country, right? You pick up the PO, very happy. The material goes to various circles. After 30 days, your finance is, where is the payment? Now, if you do not know how the material flows within the customer premises, you will never be able to reach the payment. I guarantee that. Because for them to clear payments, there's a specific process. The material goes to the warehouse. There is a good receipts note created, which is fed into their SAP. And then the bill of entries are entered and blah, 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 blah. It keeps moving from one person to another person. So if you know the process, you can actually attack the person directly and say, okay, have you done this? Can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? Very helpful. Most of the time, this is a neglected part of our understanding. Understand always why, how does the process work in the customer? When you pick up an order from first time from a customer, always ask him, can you explain to me how will the order flow in into your systems and how will things move? So if you understand them well, you will be using them very effectively. And the key in processes is be proactive. <laughs> Once you are stuck, then the process doesn't help you, then the process questions you. So I'm just saying that process is extremely important part of your understanding for you to succeed. And of course, last and the least, the most important is the people. For me, because my profile is people-oriented, I would like to be the best in people management. My focus today is more on lessons learned during my tenure in managing people and team. First thing, you get up in the morning and you find that your breakfast is not ready. Your clothes are not ironed. 
it's raining outside. You have to reach the office somehow. You reach office, you are wet, you are irritated, you are frustrated, you are hungry, and suddenly you meet your boss. Now, what will you do? He does not know what you went through. He only sees you walking into the office. If he's a little bit more observant, he will say, oh, it was raining outside. Good, you made it, made it on time or doesn't matter if you got delayed. Just because what you are going through does not mean that you give up on the basic courtesies and respect for people. There's a saying, there was a saying at my point of time, treat others the way you want to be treated. And I thought that was fantastic because that shows how you want to be treated and you will treat the other way around. But now it has become, it has improved further. It says treat them the way they want to be treated. Why should you treat them the way you want to be treated? You should treat them the way they want to be treated. So you know your bosses, you know how the, your, your colleagues, you know the waiters, drivers, security guards, what do they all want? All they want is a basic courtesy and respect from you. A good morning, a good evening, an eye contact. That's all they want. There's a friend of mine who lost his job after 17 years of working in one very large company. And he was actually removed from the job. This is two, three years back, not now. And the very next day, he got a call from a very big consultant and said that, I heard that you lost your job. And this friend of mine said, yes. He said, I like to offer you one. I have something for you. He says, why are you doing this for me? <clears throat> and my friend said, and the person said that when we met last time, you remembered my name all through. Very few people remember names like this. They just meet and go away. And I think these things help a lot. Networking and relationship. Your loyalties to the companies and the products don't remain over a period of time. What remains is your relationship and networking with the people you have worked. Never ever leave a company in bad taste. Never ever, at least from your side. Never ever fight and leave a company. This world is very small and you must understand you are working in a specific industry and in that industry, in that industry, it's possible that you will meet your people again. And once you do that, then it's important for you to have the same good relationship. So loyalty is with the people is must uh, and with the companies and the products, it's fine. But with the people, extremely important. Smile, greet, try to remember names. When you are walking into a restaurant, you see a waiter who is wearing a badge. You never use names to call him. You, we all say waiter or come here. Can you not say hi Rohit or hi Mohan? Can we order this? You see, the service levels will change. Absolutely, absolutely things will change. The moment people, your name is something which is given for you, but not used by you, it's used by others. So use the names, use the names, ask the names, try to remember. If you can't remember, learn the art of remembering names. I normally try to write their name on their forehead. I have a problem forgetting the name. So when somebody tells me the name, I virtually write the name on his forehead, trying to connect. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't, but very important. Smiling. In this complicated world, we have forgot to smile. And this is a completely tax-free activity. There is a YouTube called Fake It Till You Make It. Watch it. I don't know the name of the person who presented this lady. But it's so beautifully written that she just could not smile in a company. And then she started faking the smile. And that faking the smile became the habit. And then at least she started getting into smiling business. We don't smile at all. We just don't smile. Body language signals. It's very important that your body speaks or what you speak is shown by your body. A lot of us leaders, we have this tendency of speaking motivating words but without having body language aligned. You know, we crib about people, we crib about technology, we crib about our organizations, and the signals go down very effectively. Sorry, neg very negatively. Because 
if I am not positive, how will my team be positive? Now, if you are sitting in a group of people and you are in a crib session, you see everybody loves cribbing. You, you will find people are enjoying the cribbing part of it. But is there a need to do that? Why do you want to create negative within the, within the system? So, so please be aware that the signals flow down along with your body and your words and people notice that. And I'm sure I know most of you can understand what I'm saying. Wishing others on occasions is extremely important. Make it a habit to at least, if you want to do that, your favorite employees, your bosses, your HR people, some of your customers, try to get to their birthdays. Feed them in your mobile, you don't have to remember. And at the time on your birthday, just wish them. Some companies these days obviously wish you all the employees. But when I started working, I would not, we would not have that system. So I would go to the HR boards of the company. And I remember in Airtel, I had taken a photograph of all the anniversaries and birthdays of the employees. And I still have most of them, the people I deal with. There is no harm. How good you will feel if somebody wishes you a happy birthday tomorrow who has not spoken to you for ages. And this is also a way to keep in touch with people. You all the time don't know what to speak. So the best thing is to keep in touch by saying, nice meeting you, or happy birthday, how are you doing? Everybody loves it. Nobody hates these kind of comments. Within our office, always try and meet people instead of writing mails. Of course, you have to write mails, you have to document, do that. But I have seen people in my time also earlier, mails came later, we used to work on files. And when you go and ask a sales guy or a secretary, where is this file? She would say, it hasn't come to me. Now, I would always say the file doesn't have legs, you have legs. You go to the file, you go to the people, pick it up and come back. The whole idea about this is the more you meet, the more you will learn how to interact with people, the more you understand, learn how to understand people. But we see these days, a lot of people are busy writing mails. I have responded to his mail. I'm good. I've done my job. Now, this one is extremely important, guys. In this era of so much visibility, I am something on LinkedIn. I am something on Instagram. I am something on WhatsApp. And I'm something on Pinterest, I'm something on Tinder. I, by the time somebody wants to know me, they judge everything about me from that. And that's the biggest mistake we make. Just, I'm going to read the first sentence. How much you like or dislike someone or how attractive, non-attractive they are influences your judgment of them. Just by looks, you can't judge a person. Just by first two sentences, you can't. You can form an impression. That's a different. But you can't pass a judgment, oh, this person is like this. There are so many incidents in my life where I have made a mistake of judging and I was completely wrong, completely wrong. You travel, I mean, people in Mumbai know it. Those who travel in Mumbai, you travel in a bus or a train sitting next to somebody who could be a millionaire, you'll never be able to make out. You look at him and say, oh, he's wearing dhoti chappal, what kind of a guy is he? But then he turns out to be a millionaire. Actually, judging clouds, you're thinking about others. I want all of you to make me a promise that from tomorrow, you will make an effort not to judge people. Say it to yourself, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. You will see your thought process, your mind will open up. I judge, I used to judge my <clears throat> drivers, my, my gurujis, my coaches, and all of them are such a different personality and all of them carry so much great competence. How many times have any of you asked your maid servant if he or she has eaten breakfast or how is her family or, or does she have any problem? Is there something you can do? You don't have to be Gandhiji in that matter, but all I'm trying to say is you got to be connected. But because she's a maid, how am I connected to her? What's happening to her children is not my problem. No, that's not the right thing to do. Don't judge. Don't judge people at all. 
it's worse for you because the people remain the same. You have a challenge. Learn to accept failures, guys. Very important. I notice that in this era, and when I'm saying era, it doesn't mean I'm very old. All I'm saying is how things have changed. The ego levels have gone high, very high. People don't accept mistakes so fast. There is no harm in saying, yes, I made a mistake. Why do you need to not accept it? But today people tend to justify those points. They tend to keep arguing on it. And then without realizing what impression they are framing of themselves to others. And it still happens when I talk, I'm 33, I'm what, 31 years in my marriage life now. And we still have challenges because sometimes I'm not willing to accept my mistakes. And sometimes she's not willing to accept. And we just look at each other and we say, really? And then we realize that, yes, we made a mistake and we either apologize or accept it. Please be open in accepting it. Last thing, very controversial topic. According to me, your perception, what others think of you is reality. You may be a genius. You may be a superman. You may be a superwoman. You might be thinking you are Bill Clinton or you are anybody big, but what other think of you is the reality. And you can continue to keep justifying, but till you change your perception, till you change their perception about yourself, things will not change. And I think that's where credibility plays a very important role. I do have a lot of people who say, oh, I'm like this, I'm like this, I'm like this. And my question is, what do people think about you? What do your friends think about you? And what they think about you is what you are. Now, I've had huge arguments on this topic, but that's my view that your credibility is built on the perception what people think about you. Yes, never ever give up. Sounds very simple, but very difficult to manage. Let me give you one example. When I joined my first job, I was selling computers and I was selling desktop computers. And I had just finished my engineering from Bitspilani. This is my MBA. And I was given Knot Place in Delhi as the territory to sell computers. And I had no clue how to do it. I didn't know the desktop computer so well. So I was weak on my products and, and I didn't know what to do it. So what I used to do is to climb, take the lift to the topmost building, topmost floor of the building and keep moving, keep coming down, keep coming down floor by floor knocking at every door, sir, I'm selling desktop, I'm from this company, you want to buy it. Out of 40 calls, you would get one or two responses. You will get negative words, people will laugh at you. By lunchtime, you are half dejected, hungry, tired. So you go down, have your meal and come back and again knock. By 4, 4.30, you are dead. You are dead, you're frustrated, you don't get response. Now, that's when you can do two things. Either just back up or go home or say no, five more calls. And I guarantee you, those five calls will bring you some good results. Every time I have made calls after 4:30 in the evening, I have turned positive. The fact is that the fact is that nothing is changing on the other side. It's your mind which is changing. So you're saying, okay, no, I'm not going to give up. Let me make five more calls. Next day, you make five more extra calls. And then you realize that, that the more you try, the more you get. And this is true in every other aspect also. So don't say, no, I can't do it. There is nothing which nobody can do. If you want to, you can. Try it out. Appreciate and recognize efforts. We all like appreciation, recognition, whether you are a fresher, three year, five year, 25 year, 30 years, your boss's boss, everybody likes appreciation. So don't expect your seniors to appreciate you all the time. You should be able to appreciate your seniors also. There is no harm. I mean, I'm within the limits. Within the limits, I'm again saying if somebody is wearing a nice set of clothes, Go and say, I like your clothes. You look fine today. But I said within the limits because now a lot of companies have these posh policies where we don't need to, we have to be careful about what you're talking and how you're talking with women. But my point is appreciate things. If somebody's written a nice email, appreciate. If somebody speaks well in the, in the conference and presentation, 
don't feel shy and get getting up and clapping or appreciating and if you feel shy do that one to one write a message but and the more you do at a higher level the more mileage you will get you are supposed to do to your junior and colleagues but try and take it up a level you will find bosses will respond much better eye contact it shows your confidence it shows that you know what you are doing the moment you move tomorrow onwards see how many people speak to you with looking eye into your eyes or how many people you speak looking into the eyes i give you an example budding manager doing well i had a laptop in my room with a tv with a screen and people would walk in and i i would love to do multitasking so i'm doing my computer and i will say yeah what do you want without even looking at them and they will say something and answer and go back and one day i realized how much am i insulting them they come to my room either to ask me something or to appreciate something or to tell me something and i don't even have the courtesy to look into their eye and acknowledge it i only keep looking at my laptop so now when somebody comes to my room i shut the case of my laptop i look into them and talk to them and then i go back very important eye contact people remember you if you make this this eye contacts okay this don't assume anything is again very important because we give up something because you assume something can you go and meet up with a person no he is too senior he will not meet has he told you that has anybody told you that or can you try and can you do this task no i don't think i'm capable of doing this task we assume and close the door here itself so obviously when the doors are closed here nothing will happen remove this word assumption out of your head try to do things even if you are so sure you can't do it don't say i can't do it say i'll give it a try let me give it a try and see if that's possible when you are doing something especially this is more in context of the rfps and sales and other things when you are doing something or when you are making a sales call you have to also give commitments to your seniors about what numbers what business you are bringing but before you give the commitments take a back seat and see what are the red flags you have so if you have an opportunity which you think is going to get closed in next few days obviously you know the process but think what can go wrong now this is not being negative this is being cautious what can go wrong in this deal have i covered all the respective people have i massaged everybody's ego have i met commercial technical human resources or whoever i need to meet think start thinking what can go wrong so that you cover it up well and once you cover it up well the chances of going forward will be faster try to have a mentor guys extremely important i think right now the juno school is mentoring you go ahead and do that but as you move forward always have a mentor you will come across some of your bosses who are very close to you who like you who, who are very knowledgeable very well known in the industry uh be make them your mentor now these mentors are far more updated about things they can guide you they can tell you what is right or wrong they can actually work as a mirror to you and explain to you i still talk to two people who are my mentors one is in singapore the others in mumbai anything big i go through they know about it everything job change obviously not personal more corporate job change what's happening in the market mentoring does help and if you get a chance you should also become mentor of somebody over a period of time now this last thing again people tend to say they know everything you there are a lot of people who when you ask them something they have views on everything they have answers to everything they have justification on everything you don't need to do that say i don't know i am not google i don't know i will find out i am not supposed to know this i will find out when i may go to the customers and i'm i've been in a technical line when i go to customers they ask me technical questions sometimes i don't know the answer so how do you turn this opportunity around what i tell them is sir i don't know the answer i will come back to you now go back find the answer and get back to him it's a fantastic way to reconnect with the people you have met 
every time you leave a meeting, you must have a reason to reconnect with them. I tell my all my salespeople, when you finish a meeting, if the order is not concluded, keep a line open to have another meeting. So, sir, I think you had a great meeting. We need to answer the following things. We'll get back to you. Can we catch up with you next week? He will not say no. So you have another meeting. Try and get another meeting. If you find that you are not getting response from the person, say that I need to answer these questions or I need answers to these questions. Who else can I meet? Keep an open-ended end. You will find that people respond very well. But if you have all the answers and you don't need to know anything, that becomes a separate issue. Learn to use your areas of improvement into strengths. Yeah, this the last line is a more generic line. I think we all understand. We like brands. We like eating good food. We like eating, wearing good clothes. We like to make our bodies very well by doing gymmings and everything, which is fine. My question is, what are you feeding your mind and what are you feeding your soul? Your body is getting good food, is getting good soap, perfume, good clothes. Your hair is getting treated very well. You're spending all the time on your looks because you need to get into Instagrams. But what's happening to your mind and soul? What have you fed them? Have you fed them with good information? Have you fed them with meditation? Have you fed them with reading some books? Think about it. Most of us don't do that. And especially with this OTT business. Coming to this, learn to focus on one of this, be the best in one of this, and you see how you will attract people towards you. You know the products very well. You will find people coming into you. You know the process very well. People will come and ask you what the process is. If you are networking and the people management is good, people will always come to you with problems to say, how is that we can solve? So look at yourself today, tomorrow, day after. Think about it. See where your strength lies. My learning, guys, over a period of last 30, 40 years is that you cannot choose your managers and customers. You have to live with them. So best is to understand them better. How do you build a trust? How do you build credibility? When your manager asks me, ask you why you late, you say, I got stuck in a traffic jam. Okay, he will buy it once. Second time, he will not buy it. Have you ever missed a flight because you are stuck in a jam? If you are a nurse, have you ever dropped, have you ever dropped a newborn baby and say, oh, I dropped one out of one million babies? Those parents will not leave you. So you've got to build trust and credibility with your managers and customers. Or if you speak truth, you don't have to remember. If you tell a lie, you will always have to remember what lie you have told others. So make life very simple. Speak truth, accept faults, accept mistakes. People will also be at ease. They will trust you more. Always find out whether your bosses are and your customers are people-oriented or task-oriented. Now, when, what I mean is, what is their level of working? Now, if a task-oriented person, if you're going to meet a task-oriented person, don't talk about the weather and the rain and the umbrellas and the dress because he doesn't like it. That's not his orientation. But a people-oriented person, how are you? How are things? I mean, did you, it's been a great weather. Did you go to this restaurant or whatever? Start the conversation using that. It's important for you to know what they want, what kind of personality they are, not what you are. And that's where you will find credibility. You know what happened when I was in Bharti? You won't believe I called my boss and said, boss, and don't do it, please. I'm just sharing with you. I called my boss and said, boss, I don't feel like coming to office. Can I bunk today? And he started laughing. He says, nobody in my life has ever spoken to me like this. So I said, I could have told you that I'm unwell and you would have said, Udi, take care, look after yourself. But I just told you the fact. And he says, I understand. And see you tomorrow. Don't come today. And he made it as an example. So obviously, but if somebody who's task oriented, I can't ask this question. You ask a task oriented person, can I bunk? He will say you bunk forever. Don't come back to office. So you got to gauge and judge people. Read as much as you can. I'm not saying read a lot, but read something every day. I don't know how many of you read newspapers, how many of you subscribe to something, 
but read something. Don't live your life on Netflix and Amazon and Boot and ZTV all the time. The reading actually improves your concentration and also gives you depth of the matter. Extremely important part. Uh, so try and see, at least be aware, are you reading or not? Let the thought be in your mind, oh, oh I have not read today. Focus on that, it will help. The last three lines, now this is something which you'll have to do it all together. You need to invest your time in personal finance. You need to understand how money works. At the end of the day, these are the three things which will be with you all the time. Relationship, personal finance, physical and mental health. You need to get a little bit on finances. I mean, now, lately you see a lot of women are involved in their families in finance matters. Earlier, women had no idea about how much money is in the family and what the husband's doing, where he's spending. Today, also, there are a lot of them. And I always tell my female friends, get involved in understanding how much money you spend in running the house, what's your inflow, what's your outflow, where is the investment done. You should all have the power to do that. All of you are learn earning, understand how your salary is being spent. Are you saving something? And you must save something. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30%, you must save something. Invest in physical health. If you don't invest in physical health, all the money you earn from here will go wasted in physical health going forward. So if your health is not good, all 55 years will only get into the hospitals and then you'll end up spending all your money because after that, insurances are difficult. Make yourself mentally strong. Now, when we say mentally, we say have the power to judge things on your own. That's what I mean by mental strength. Have the patience. Understand when you are angry. Understand when you are anxious. Understand when you are down and depressed. When you are down and depressed, ask yourself, what is happening? Why am I like this today? You will find that something has irritated you in the last couple of hours because of which you are in that state. And as long as you know the problem, you will find the solution. I think, yes, we all go through it. What are the right things to do? What are the next steps? Changing job. Is the next job going to be better than what I have? What if I have a different boss? The only way you can do that is to write down the pros and cons and be very unbiased about it and write it down and see what is which side is weighing heavier. A lot of people leave their jobs because they think they are not in the right company or because they are frustrated with something. You should only leave your job if you're getting growth. Unless you are asked to go, don't leave your jobs unnecessarily because we leave a job because the current job is bad. We, leave a, we should leave a job because the new job is good. Now, good is defined in terms of your compensation, the company, the brand, the role, everything. But don't get frustrated and leave. Okay. Take something and pick it up. I think sales is a very misdefined profession. Sales exactly. is not only selling your product. Sales is also making yourself smarter in, in the field of managing people. Finance is making yourself smarter in the field of numbers and mm -hmm. similarly the other jobs. So I think it's not what you sell in sales. Of course, that's important and the company will only look at it. But from your point of view, your hard work, your passion, your energy levels, your networking, your product knowledge, everything will be up. And sales is never on a trajectory of growth all the time. It's got ups and downs like stock market. So one has to learn to take it. I mean, there are salespeople who are surrounded by people, team, customers, but there are salespeople who go and sell oil in the oil field. They sit for three, three days to have meetings all alone. So sales job has complete set of varieties. So opinions will be formed. The moment you will look at me, you will form an opinion of me. But an opinion is very different from making a judgment of who I am. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Opinions are formed. When we interview people, we make our opinion the way the candidate walks in, the way he shakes hand, the way he do, does eye contacts. If there are four people sitting in a panel, how many people is he looking at with his two eyes? We also form opinion, but we don't judge him. And judging is a negative thing. Without understanding people, we should not form a negative judgment about them 
unless we know everything about them. That's all I'm trying. And once you don't judge people, you will be very open to accept what they say. Let's assume you have a friend who you do not like for some reason. And you have a friend who you like for some reason. Now, the friend who you do not like, whatever he says, you will never take him. You will always take him with a pinch of salt. You will think twice. But a friend you like and you get along well, when he says, you will never think twice. You will say, yeah, this guy is right. Now, why this difference? The difference is only because the people, took, there are two different people. So don't let the perception, the judgment blind you in terms of suggestions and not moving forward. It will help you to open your mind when you stop judging people. Opinions will be formed, but judgment should not be formed. A person drinks coffee without sugar and you drink milk with sugar. I'm just giving an example. Opinions will be formed and don't stop those opinions. All I'm saying is don't make a negative judgment about, oh, how dirty his shoes are. He doesn't polish his shoes. Maybe he didn't get time to polish. Maybe he doesn't have money to buy shoes. Maybe he didn't have time to wash it. Maybe he's coming from a desert. That's all I'm trying to say. So, if the shoes are dirty, they are dirty and you will notice and you will form an opinion. But that opinion should not convert into any decision making which is negative in nature. At any age, at any time, at the end of the day, spend 30 seconds to yourself and ask this question. What did I learn new today? If you are so learning something new every day, just imagine in a day, in a year, you learn 365 things. Okay, now, if by the end of the day you do, have not learned anything, my suggestion is just pick up a dictionary and learn an English word. But without learning something every day, you have wasted your day. So, since your journey is new, since you need to go on a path of growth, your main objective should be knowledge gathering as much as possible. And how do you gauge knowledge gathering? You only gauge by the amount of knowledge you've acquired every day, every week, every month, every year. Don't feel shy in asking questions to people. When I go for interviews, not now, when I was young and I used to go to give interviews for a job, my last question always used to be, would you like to give me a feedback? And they would say, why do you want to know the feedback? And I would say, because I want to do my next interview better than this one. And people are very happy when you ask feedback. So they'll tell you, oh, that you did this well, you did not do this well. Oh, that you were not very great on eye contact or oh, that you were shaking your right leg or whatever. And those are great feedback. Online, absolutely great feedbacks. Every organization has a sales process and every organization has a way to drive people. Some are professional, some are hardcore, some are nice. You already know that it's going to be difficult and it's going to be challenging. And what's the harm in getting into it and doing it? Tell me what's the harm. If it's every sales is hard, you, you know, people are moving from yearly sales to quarterly sales to monthly sales to weekly sales to daily sales numbers. So it's not going to be easy anywhere. Now, it's the question of how much tough the bosses there are and how are you willing to take it? If you have faith in yourself, go for it. What's the harm in that? At the end of the day, you will only land up learning something new. You are not going to lose anything, right? I mean, when we were starting management trainees, HCL was the company where people said that if you work in HCL, you will get a job anywhere else because HCL was supposed to be the fantastical, hardcore driving sales company, selling computers. And today, if you look at all those people who were in HCL that time, are brilliant salespeople all over. So no harm in trying it out. Do your groundwork properly. Be sure what you are getting into it and be aware that you will go through all that and take the challenge.